As you can see, I did go to Florida for a week-long vacation with my girlfriend's family. I had a lot of film packed up, and I only ended up shooting around three rolls. And as you can see from the photos as well, I messed up two of those rolls developing. And I'll be completely honest, I didn't take a lot of photos that I liked on this trip because it rained a lot. It, the weather was not the best. It was over 100 degrees. It felt like 100 degrees every day with the humidity. Every time I would take my camera out, it would immediately fog up because of the humidity. And it was just not a fun environment to shoot. Myself, I can't really connect with condos and beach resorts and fancy cars and fancy houses everywhere. That doesn't really interest me, and that's where we were at a lot, so... I didn't really take that many photos around there. But if I ever go back to Florida, um, I would like to spend a little more time in the, the touristy areas and the more, uh, the areas that have a little bit more character and not as upscale because um, that kind of reminds me more of the Midwest and where I come from. So um, I was really happy with the Cinestill 50D photos that I took because when I shot that in the past, I've only ever shot one roll of that, and when I shot it, it came back extremely green. And I was using Negative Lab Pro at the time, and I just didn't think, I just don't think that I knew how to edit at the time because these photos, when I do convert them, they do have a slight tint of green, but now with knowing how to scan a little bit better and edit a little bit more proficiently, I can easily take that green tint out, and I liked these a lot. I just like the colors that it puts out. It's not overly saturated like Portrait 400 or Portrait 800, which I did shoot a roll of Portrait 800 and it got fucked up in developing, but the colors were a little bit too punchy for me and the grain is a little bit um, too relevant as well. So I like 50D because it's a little less on the saturation and you can hardly tell that the grain is there as well. So with that said, I wanted to show four female photographers that I've been following along with and really enjoying their work. Um, the first one is Maria Lax, and I first discovered her work on Willem Verbeek's channel when she talked about her book, Some Kind of Heavenly Fire. 
And I didn't really follow along with her right after watching that. It wasn't until I listened to her on a podcast called Process Driven with Jeffrey Sidoris that I really started to connect with what she was putting out. By giving us that over-the-top, sort of very saturate level of color, allowing us to kind of experience a little bit of that, you know, sort of vicariously. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually, it was, it's quite fun because I get a lot of people uh, messaging me asking, where is this location? Like, can I go and visit? Like, I'd love to see it in Don't real life. Don't tell them. Yeah, Don't well, tell like, them. <laughs> but it's also like, I, I'm not going to tell you that because you'll travel there from God knows where and then you'll just see this place that looks nothing like it in right. daylight or like, it's not... It's like real places that are totally imaginary, you know? Right, right. It, it, like, you, you can't, it's a place where you can't go because it's mine. <laughs> but I really uh, liked the way that she described that because it felt nice to hear that uh, you can change things and you can edit things and you can make things different from what they are in real life because when I first started photography, I was stuck in the way of making things like a documentary, making sure they were perfectly how they are if you were to go there and see it with your own eyes and it was nice to hear another side of that where you're trying to put off a certain mood or a certain feeling and knowing that she didn't want to give away those locations because someone might go there and see something completely different and then they might think something uh, different of her work and I just really connected with that because I'm always trying to make the best image possible to create a feeling or a mood and not only just the realistic side of things. The next person that I wanted to mention is a woman by the name of Julia Degasperi and I apologize if I get any of these names wrong of course but um, I found her because I was following Nowhere Diary which is another great resource to find all kinds of diverse photographers. The project that I liked the most from her is called These Dark Mountains and the description is it captures the lives of people working in the Italian Alps. The project took place during the traditional pasture season in which alpine farmers move with their livestock from their permanent settlements in the valleys to temporary settlements in the mountains. This ancient practice which created one of the most species rich and diverse landscapes in Europe is now increasingly threatened by factors such as abandonment and climate change. And I just really love the way that she captures the landscapes and the people of this region. It is all in black and white. And I've been really falling in love with black and white work ever since I found Brian Scootmont, who makes incredible black and white. But it just is nice to see people from different regions, different backgrounds, um, doing different jobs, stuff that I don't know anything about because I'm just a photographer. And the labor that people go through and the triumphs and heartbreaks that people go through and just trying to live everyday life is uh, very important for me to look at and study be so I'm not completely unaware of what's uh, going on around me in other parts of the world. The next photographer is a photographer from San Francisco and her name is Han Fan. I've been watching her grow as an artist and not only as a photographer but a portrait photographer and it's just nice to see someone actively and progressively get better through time and it's just you don't see that a lot with people and you, you're seeing that with her because she's taking risks and she's doing things that make her uncomfortable and she's learning from that. But the project or the series of photos that she's doing with her parents is what sticks out to me the most. She writes these lovingly descriptive captions alongside her photos as well. And this one about her mother was really well written. And it says, my mother told me she was the byproduct of a colonizer unlawfully claiming what wasn't his, a country, a woman's body, her fatherless life. She keeps these family secrets hidden under her tongue or tucked inside her cheeks. The way you would stow away a bitter pill and then spit it back out forcefully is the way she tells me about our lineage. Her hips have started growing in reverse, which is to say the arthritis is winning, which is to say she is also shrinking. She is me and I am her and she is seated in my mitochondria, a powerhouse linking her past and my future, 
a story I won't stop telling. And that's pretty much just all I need to say with that. Um, go look at her work, go read her words, and uh, also go to her website. She has a wonderful blog where she kind of puts her B shots, I guess you would say. And she writes about those as well. And it kind of makes me want to write alongside my photos and start up a little journal or a blog myself. So uh, go check her out. You won't regret it. And the last one is Leah Anchors. She has a project titled The Same As You. And in her own words, she says, The Same As You began from having a disability myself. Since a young age, I have stigmatized myself through my differences. I wanted to change the notion of people with dual sensory impairment and additional disabilities. It became apparent over time that everyday objects and environments are very important. We use our senses all the time, but most of that is by default and not conscious awareness. Most of the time we take our senses for granted. In this series, I aim to represent the perception of disability. And this project kind of goes back to me just wanting to better understand um, things that I am either uneducated about or unaware of, and disabilities like that kind of fit into that category. And it only helps that it's accompanied by wonderful portraits as well. And it's the type of portraits that you want to take that humanize people. And it just makes you feel a certain way when you look at them. And you look the person in the eyes or in the face. And you can see um, a certain thing that they're going through. Or you can see a certain feeling that they feel. And that's something that I want to do in my photos and I don't know if I'm doing it yet and I don't know if I ever will but looking at work like this it helps me kind of push towards that point where I want to be so I hope I didn't ramble too much and I hope I didn't say the word wonderful too much even though I know that I did but I hope you guys enjoyed that I'm not very uh, eloquent when it comes to my words about photography because I myself am not very educated when it comes to the actual art of photography or the history of photography. So I hope what I said about these projects didn't come off as stupid or annoying. But um, if you guys have any recommendations about female photographers to follow, please let me know. And I'm going to mention some more in the description, some other photographers that I've been following along with, as well as some that I've mentioned in previous videos. That you should definitely check out if you missed the last one but the last thing i'm going to say is just be a little bit better if you have a big following or a big support system be a little bit better about diversifying who you recommend um, it's only going to help people if you do that and it's only going to hurt people if you keep recommending the same people over and over specifically your top five friends or who you would have on your top eight friends list on myspace that doesn't help anyone it just creates a circle jerk of the same people getting recommended and the same people getting all the praise so uh, do that and i think we'll all be better in the long run hope you guys enjoyed thank you for the support and i'll see you in the next one